today we are going to make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not going to be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models have practically built Stir themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv. Today on Echoes from the Chalkboard, we are going to go look at one of the sites and talk about one of the buildings that was one of the original buildings in the Salt Lake City School District when it was incorporated in 1890, or incorporated or put together, or organized, whatever you want to call it. But this particular building wasn't around very long, but it was a beautiful, beautiful edifice. One of the things that um, got me to start studying this particular building and, and learning more about it was this time of year, several years ago, uh, Human Rights Day. You know, weather isn't all that good here in Utah, but you got a day off. There's things you can be doing. And so what I decided to do was get online and I was looking through some pictures at the State Historical Society and I found this beautiful school named Lincoln. So today, on Echoes from the Chalkboard, we're going to look at the original Lincoln School that was in the Salt Lake City School District. Of course, every school district has a Lincoln, you know, why not? But uh, this is the first that uh, was in the Salt Lake School District. So stick with us, folks, and uh, hopefully you'll uh, learn something new and interesting. We start out today with a question. How many different schools in the Salt Lake City School District have been named Lincoln? after President Abraham Lincoln? Well, the answer should be one, right? Wrong. There's three different schools that have been named Lincoln in the Salt Lake City School District alone. Today, we're going to look at the first of those schools. So buckle up and remember what we talked about a few weeks ago in looking at pictures thoroughly, the background and all of the details. So, the Lincoln that we're going to talk about used to be located on what is called 440 West and 500 South in Salt Lake City. It was built in 1892 with a square footage of 17,793 square feet. This building served patrons of the area of the west side of Salt Lake City till 1919 when it was closed down as a regular school. This particular map here from the Sanborn Fire Insurance maps will show you the location of where it sat on the, um, on the plot of land in relationship to where the main line of the, uh, uh, well, the Rio Grande uh, railroad tracks are to the west of it. The original building consisted of 12 classrooms. You'll notice in this picture the flagpole is up on top of the building. But you'll also notice, if you look in the background to the left, what was called the Manual Training Building. And this is where they taught kids things like, well, horseshoeing and, uh, you know, just some of the, the manual trades that kids would need to know at an early age. Kind of interesting. Here's a good picture, again on the left-hand side, of that building in the very back of the property. You see the maypole that uh, the kids are all standing around. You see... Uh, a lot of things in this picture, and we'll address one of them here again in just a minute, but kind of an interesting picture of the playground at the time. Looks like it's a dirt or possibly grass playground. This picture of the building has some really nice details, but of note, on the far right hand side, there's some kind of a building in the background that uh, looks kind of like maybe it has a partial dome or something on it. So I looked at the Sanborn fire insurance maps to see exactly what I was looking at. And I was able to determine that in the lot behind the school was the Greek Orthodox Church there on 400 South. And if you look on the right side of this photo, you can see Lincoln in the background. How about that? I believe this building is still there. Actually, I haven't checked that out. <coughs> But as of a few years ago, uh, this building was still there. So here's a great picture with some students in it. Uh, again, this looks like it's taken kind of early in the year. 
uh, on the very far left, you see the manual training building. And as we move to the right, you can see a basketball backboard, then a building with a large smokestack, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then the Greek Orthodox Church, and of course the Maypole, and you know, the kids doing whatever they're doing with the Maypole there. But one thing you'll notice about most of these pictures, including this one, is how hazy it is. The, in, the exterior air quality in Salt Lake City back then was horrible. Kind of like it still is today, uh, just for different reasons. Anyway, the building with the smokestack in the background was the Rio Grande Depot. And here is a picture of the Rio Grande train depot being built. If you look very carefully on the left-hand side, there are four trees standing straight up. And right behind that is where the uh, Lincoln School is. So you can barely see it in the picture. Kind of neat. And again, here on the right-hand side, you see the train depot and then the smokestack, which was for the power plant that powered the train depot. And that's just on the north side of 400 South. So not very far away from the uh, lot or the, the playground of the school. And again, back in the day, I don't think there was ever an unsmoggy day uh, due to all the coal and the wood that was burned. So here's a great picture that's a completely different angle. This is west of the building looking to the east. You can't see the mountains, it's too bad. But on the left-hand side, you can see the Lincoln School. And how I know this is the west side of the school is the smokestack of the building was on the west side. You can see the train tracks and some of the train cars there on the uh, DNRG main line. Really a fun picture. So this particular one was taken on April 11th of 1921 is the date that I have for this picture which is kind of a neat picture for April, though uh, there's not a lot of foliage on the trees. You can see a teacher there in the doorway. You can see the building next door, which I believe was a stable, uh, belonged to, uh, to somebody else. It had nothing to do with the school. So anyway, here's how the school wound up. So the building was closed in 1919, I believe due to declining enrollment in the area. And it was used as a storage uh, warehouse, mostly for the school district's hardwood for their hardwood floors. And it was used until 1933, December of 1933, when the property was sold. And eventually by 1940, it had been torn down. Today, the site is occupied by the Utah Paper Box Company. It's uh, too bad that they tore down the old Lincoln. It's such a beautiful school. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this piece, and we'll talk again soon about one of the other Lincolns in the school district.